Welcome to the Fog Shrouded Realm of Dead by Daylight, where the line between life and death blurs, and the pursuit of survival is both relentless and thrilling. In How to Survive a Dead by Daylight Beginner's Handbook, we embark on a journey into the heart-pounding world of this asymmetric horror game. Whether you're a newcomer nervously stepping into the fog for the first time, or a fledgling survivor seeking to hone your skills, this guy is your essential companion. Join us as we navigate the ominous trials, unravel the mysteries of the entity, and equip you with the knowledge to outwit, outrun, and outlast the relentless killers. Are you ready to face the terror and emerge victorious? Or will you succumb to the darkness? Your survival starts here. Today, we are going to be talking about looping. And by looping, I mean being able to keep the killer chasing you and also being able to evade them without going down. And there's multiple perks that are good at this. I myself don't fully know all the perks that are good for this. But a build that I know is good, we've got Dead Hard, Resilience, Made for this, Windows of Opportunity. And the way it works is that once you've been on hook once, you unlock the ability to be able to use Dead Hard. Which basically means if the killer goes to hit you and you manage to hit the activi active ability button, or keyboard or mouse, this is E. If you manage to hit that just before the killer hits you, or the hit that they go to do connects with you, you are then, instead of being downed, you are then put into endurance, or as it's commonly known, deep wounds. And being able to manage the dead hard, and then doing or managing the dead hard, you're put into deep wounds, which then activates made for this, giving you an extra 3% running. Yeah, you run 3% faster. Basically meaning that if you manage it during a chase with a killer, and the killer's hit you, you have a 3% boost to your running speed. Meaning any time you are running, you're quicker. To steady obvious. But as soon as you stop running, you start to feel the effects of deep wounds. Which does inevitably, if you don't mend yourself after exiting chase with a killer, it does down you. You won't you'll be actually surprised how many survivors I've seen go down because of deep wounds in the last week. The other two perks in this build, we've got Resilience and we have Windows of Opportunity. To explain Resilience, basically Resilience is for those moments where you're not in chase and you haven't been healed by one of your other survivors. It basically gives you a 9% additional speed when repairing, sabotaging, healing, unhooking, vaulting, cleansing, or blasting totems. And doing the exit gates and everything like that. Pretty much it gives you a 9% additional speed to everything, you may as well say, while you're injured. Which, in times where you've dead hearted, made the, made the most of it, just say, and had deep wounds and everything like that, if you then mend from the deep wounds, you're just normally, you're normal injured. So that puts you in the right spot to be using resilience. And also before you end on hook, resilience is also good because you'll be injured before they down you half the time, unless it is a tier three Myers downing you, uh, exposed from ghost base, and anything that basically makes you a one hit down. So, stuff like Oni's um, Demon Bash, I think it's called. 
They're basically where he attacks and that one hits you when he's enraged and stuff like that. And then we move on to Windows. Well, Windows is going to be your key perk here, allowing you to know where pallets are. If a pallet in a loop has been used already, to say someone drops pallet shack, or no, shack pallet, I mean, and the survivor, the killer has broken it, you will know about that because you'll really be able to see that there isn't a a pallet there anymore because the aura of the pallet is not going to be shown. It also shows breakable walls. So on Midwich, there's quite a few um, breakable walls that you will be able to see. But mainly, it's for being able to work out where your next loop is going to be. And also, it does show vaults, I think, as well. Yeah, vault locations, breakable walls, and pallets are all revealed to you within 32 meters. Which basically goes, so you could be in, let's say, Shack, as it will show in one of my clips. I don't use in one of all my clips, but I'm about to show after this, use this build. The first one with Oni, or one of the one, the one with Oni, I don't know which order the clips will be in as of filming this, but with that one I don't have windows, and I probably do make, I do make a mistake in that video, and you'll see the mistake, but my best tips for looping is try and keep the killer, the, at least their red stain, so when they're in chase, they have a red stain that you can see. Try and keep that in your vision. So if you're on the corner of Shack, you can use that and be on that corner. As soon as they come up to come round that corner from round the side of Shack, you can see their their red stain, knowing which direction they're coming from. The only way they will be able to get to you without you realizing is if they moonwalk. So if they move backwards, their red stain will still be in front of them, which can put survivors off, so be careful of that one. And also, if you use a pallet within the loop, so let's say like Shack, we're using Shack as a lot of examples here. So if you use the Shack pallet and the killer then breaks it. The best thing to try and do, I would admit, is to move on to another loop. And then try and use that loop until, let's say, vault locations get blocked by the entity. And then you move on to another loop and try and keep looping the killer the best you can without taking hits, without being downed. I do make a lot of mistakes when looping. I'm not the best at looping as you will see from my clips, but I do think that's it. Oh no, we do want to talk about the item add-on as well. You can, I would say the best thing to bring in for this build is probably a flashlight. Any flashlight will do, but the best you, one you'll get is the util <laughs> utility flashlight, which has 12 uses, increased brightness by 30%, increased blind duration 15%, and decreased accuracy by 20%. Then we have add-ons. We have the ha the intense halogen, which increases brightness, <coughs> <coughs> increases brightness and increases blind duration. And then you have six extra seconds of use with a green battery. These two can be swapped out, but I would always recommend having an intense halogen on your flashlight at all times the best you can your offering doesn't matter but the best way to put it you probably want to be bringing streamers with this because you're going to be hopefully if you manage it well building good points from being able to evade the killer to being able to loop them because the longer you're on chase the longer that category will be giving you um blood points but now we're going to jump into the clips and try and analyze them from your point of view, what I do wrong, what you know you can do. And also, if there's any 
tips you want to give, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Come on, 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 come on. Hey. Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh. Where else is he? Getting through. Oh, he's right there. Move loop. Ah, oh, you got me. And I've literally played the game pretty much non stop since. Ooh, dead hearted. I dead hearted him. Out of the way, Fang. Technically didn't have to use that pallet, but hey ho. That's my challenge done. Could go right the way around. Even if I went inside. Not in my neighborhood. You in it, tell my survivors, not in my neighborhood. Got him. They want to